Let's go back to the basics and explore the technology platform that has been regarded as the gold standard for many years. Yeah, you guessed it. I'm talking about Sanger Sequencing by Capillary Electrophoresis. Many might ask, why is it called Sanger Sequencing? Well, Sanger Sequencing is named after the inventor of this groundbreaking technology, Dr. Frederick Sanger, who I like to call Fred, who developed this method over 40 years ago in the mid-70s. So what are the basics of Sanger Sequencing? Let's take a look at our lab book. It all starts by having a short primer binding next to the region of interest. In the presence of the four nucleotides, the polymerase will extend the primer by adding on the complementary nucleotide from the template DNA strand. To find the exact composition of the DNA sequence, we need to bring this reaction to a defined stop that allows us to identify the base at the very end of this particular DNA fragment. Sanger did this by removing an oxygen atom from the ribonucleotide. Such a nucleotide is called a dideoxide nucleotide. This is analogous of throwing a wrench into a gear. The polymerase enzyme can no longer add normal nucleotides into this DNA chain. The extension is stopped, and we now need to identify what it is. We identify the chain terminating nucleotide by a specific fluorescent dye, four specific colors to be exact. Sanger sequencing results in the formation of extension products of various lengths terminated with dye dioxide nucleotides at the three prime end. The extension products are then separated by capillary electrophoresis, or CE. The molecules are injected by an electrical current into a long glass capillary filled with a gel polymer. And during CE, an electrical field is applied so that the negatively charged DNA fragments move toward the positive electrode. The speed at which the DNA fragment migrates through the medium is inversely proportional to its molecular weight. This process can separate the extension products by size at a resolution of one base. A laser then excites the dye-labeled DNA fragments as they pass through a tiny window at the end of the capillary and the excited dye emits a light at a characteristic wavelength that is detected by a light sensor. Software can then interpret the detected signal and translate it into a base call. When the sequencing reaction is performed, in the presence of all four terminated nucleotides, you eventually get a pool of DNA fragments that are measured and separated base by base. What you will get in the end is a data file showing the sequence of the DNA in a colorful electropharogram and a text file, which you can use to answer the questions you may be asking. And that, in a nutshell, is Sanger Sequencing. For more information, download the free DNA Sequencing Guide through the link below. I hope this video was helpful on the basics of Sanger Sequencing, and I'm sure you'll have more questions. So submit your questions at thermofisher.com forward slash ask, and subscribe to our channel to see more videos like this. And remember, when in doubt, just seek it out.